So, Kevin, what did you think of Governor Hochul saying this is like a unique one and done because Donald Trump went too far and was so nefarious? Uh, you guys, if you're just doing what you should be doing, you have nothing to worry about. But they're very worried about it. Oh, that was different. It's almost like she's admitting that it was a political hit job by a partisan weaponized justice system. Unfortunately for her, though, nobody's buying it. Why would you? Who's to say that you won't be the next political target because you did or said something that the authoritarian Democrats don't agree with? One person who's definitely not buying it is Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary, who left no mysteries about his feelings on this insane ruling. This award, um, I mean, just leaving the whole Trump thing out of it and, and seeing what occurred here, and, and I'm, I'm no different than any other investor. I'm shocked at this. I, I can't even understand or fathom uh, the, the decision at all. It, it, there's no rationale for it. And so let me give you a real-time uh, experience I'm having regarding this, and I'm not the only one. It doesn't matter what the governor says. New York was already a loser state. <laughs> Like California is a loser state. There are many loser states because of policy, high taxes, uncompetitive regulation. It was already on the top of the list of being a loser state. I would never invest in New York now. And I'm not the only person saying that. I can't go to New York. So I'm going to Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia. They don't do things like this. Do you think any foreign institution or any private equity firm or any pension fund would touch New York? No. And that's why New Yorkers should be concerned. The fine people of New York should ask themselves, why are we such a loser state? How are we going to attract business? It's not just the existing businesses that are fleeing out to Texas and Florida. What about new money like this that I'm talking about, like a $4 billion data center? Not a chance I would put that in New York. Zero probability. Never. Who lost money? This is some arbitrary decision a judge made. This policy and what this says, what does this say about the bar, the legal bar in New York? Aren't they going to question this judge? What is this? $355 million and there's dollars as a, as a penalty and there's plus interest at 9% and there's no victim? I mean, I'm sorry, her, her words fall on deaf ears to everybody. There's nothing she can say to justify this decision. And this has nothing to do with Trump. Nothing to do with Trump. Forget about Trump. This is not a Trump situation. This is a New York problem now. The whole world is looking at this saying, what are you doing to yourselves? That boy is good. Here's the thing. Even the New York Times agreed that it couldn't find a single case in history where this statute was used against an individual or a company that did not commit a criminal offense. Nobody lost any money. And according to Kevin O'Leary, what Donald Trump did is just standard operating procedure for everyone. So while the Democrats running New York destroy it by being soft on crime and inviting hordes of illegal aliens, they're also now driving away all the business. Oh, that's brilliant. And this is something that began during COVID, but will no doubt get much, much worse now. Especially with Trump supporting truckers now refusing to deliver goods to New York City. Talk to one driver who says she's joining the movement to boycott New York City and she says if things go as planned the city could pay a big price. It could shut New York City down um, and you know I don't want to hurt the people of New York that's not what I'm trying to do but my part in it if, if New York just loses 10 percent just 10 percent of the trucks that go in there their prices are gonna skyrocket on everything from milk to eggs to any type of goods that the consumer needs. Looking at the irony of all of this is that Donald Trump actually saved New York business back in the 80s and 90s. So yeah, this entire thing is yet another attempt by the actual authoritarian threats to democracy to take away the American people's ability to vote for who they want by imprisoning or bankrupting him. Which is very interesting because it's so similar to what's happening in Russia under Putin's tyranny. They're so much more alike than they'll ever be able to see. All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. If you're still watching, might as well hit that like button and make sure to keep checking back for more. See you on the next one.